Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I think it's one o'clock, so let's start. Good. Um, so my name is Richard Pope. I'm a uh, designer and technologist, um, uh, and I've had a kind of long-running interest in civic information, local information, planning applications, that kind of thing. So I'm here today to talk about um, a project I've been working on, which is nearly ready to go. It's not quite as finished as I would like to have done for this, but it's nearly there. Um, called localnotices.org, and it's a, a, a commons, a platform for, for civic notices is the aim of the project. So I'm going to talk a bit about civic notices uh, and then kind of give you a demo um, of, the, of the product and show you the API and maybe talk a bit about the code behind it if there's time. Um, so this is a kind of story about, about lampposts um, and about commons. Um, so I'm not sure how... You see these a lot in the UK. Um, they're planning applications tied to lampposts um, on the streets. Um, uh, this is from the Isle of Wight, which kind of just about tangentially related is, I think, where some of the early open street map activity happened. Um, and they kind of tell you, sort of give you forewarning and uh, an opportunity to contribute to um, a proposed development plan. Um, I saw this one uh, on Friday in, in um, Brussels. For some reason, blown up. It was huge, like uh, attached to the wall of the building. Um, my French is not very good, but I'm hoping that is also a planning application. It looked like it was. Um, it's another one. There's kind of lots of local authorities have sort of started to try and digitize these. They put QR codes on them. There's kind of a web, a web version of it, but they're very much like a paper analog of, uh, sorry, a digital analog of a paper process. You can kind of go and find the information online, but there's not really a, um, it's really kind of good raw information. Um, and this is a pattern that kind of pops up a lot in local governments, I mean, local information. We kind of re use this process of notifying the public, giving them an opportunity within a window to, to um, give their thoughts on something. So we can use it for when people are thinking about building new things, opening pubs, opening restaurants, if a road's going to be closed. Um, uh, kind of more general consultations, trying to get people's input on, on local plans, and also kind of like less directly government-related ones, so things like a food bank needs items from the local public, um, or maybe there's opportunities to volunteer. But there's this kind of recurring pattern of giving the public uh, the option of contributing to something to, to a, uh, something which is kind of geographically bounded. Um, and I think that pattern comes up a lot for this reason, that information about our communities is important to the functioning of those communities. Um, we put these things in place as a society to, 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 make, our, to make our communities better and stronger, hopefully. Um, so you have, uh, you have um, uh, the ability as a citizen to be able to uh, take part in your local community. Um, and they actually have a kind of, despite mostly being like paper-based, they have a lot of the characteristics of a kind of digital commons. So this is a, um, a quote um, which tries to define what a digital commons is, and it kind of has uh, things in it uh, like shared uh, data shared collectively between a community, um, uh, orientated to reuse rather than exchange. Um, the community has uh, the opportunity to in intervene in the governance of it. I think there's a there's a lot of overlap between these kind of these processes we have in, in local government and uh, kind of more broad digital commons. So I've been trying to think like what is the equivalent of, a, of a, lamp, a sign on a lamppost in, in the digital age. Uh, oh. I'm not sure what's happened there. There we go. There we go. Um, and thinking a lot about other examples of, of digital commons that are out there. So if Wikipedia is a, a kind of a commons of agreed knowledge and OpenStreetMap, which you've been hearing about, is kind of like a, a commons of things you can trip over in the real world. It's kind of like it's a representation of the physical world. Uh, Wikimedia Commons is kind of photos and media. Open Corporates is an open database of companies and company ownership. So I'm wondering, can we build a civic commons of civic, a, a, a digital commons of civic notices? Um, and why? For this reason, really. Like, I'm kind of, this works based on a, a hypothesis I want to test, which is like, if we improve the quality and quantity of, of information in our communities, can we make those communities better and stronger? 
um, because I worry that if we continue to rely on relatively analogue methods of consultation and informing people, and we don't take that information to where people actually are, then we risk undermining trust, further, un uh, further undermining trust in our, uh, our civic institutions, which I think is something that we should all be worrying about at the moment. Um, so, slightly rough drawing there, um, but I'm kind of imagining if, if we could have a world where we have like good open data and uh, good quality data about civic notices, we can reuse that information anyway. So we might keep on printing things on lampposts. We might attach it automatically to the receipts in, in supermarkets. We might automatically post it to local groups on Facebook. Um, you can imagine that when you buy or rent a house, maybe information is automatically dragged into that process. Um, or if um, a couple of questions about routing apps earlier, if you're trying to, draw, if you're trying to plan a route from A to B uh, and you can find out that the road's closed uh, for some reason, then you could potentially service that information in there. Does that make sense so far? Good. So I will endeavour to show you a demo of where we're at at the moment. So, <coughs> um, I'll try and show you the kind of the characteristics of, well, I'll try and show you um, what this product does at the moment uh, and some of the characteristics of the data, and then talk a bit about the API underneath it. So, there's currently two notices in this uh, at the moment. So, we've got one here. Um, which is an application for a, uh, a license, an alcohol license. So we have a location and we have a bunch of data about it. So who the applicant is, what the address is, and then that information is available in various formats. I will come back to that later. And we got another example here, which is actually items needed by a local food bank. Um, so again, a location and then the items that are needed and that's available as structured data. Um, I will show you what it is like to add a notice now. So uh, I'm going to put the fact that the road outside here is closed because there's food carts in it. Um, uh, Uh, and we'll have type. So this is kind of similar to the OpenStreetMap style of tagging. So try, I'm trying to create something that is relatively a relatively blank canvas. Um, and then we could put other things in there if it, if it was applicable. Um, and we're then going to go ahead and add that to the map. Ooh. Sorry about that. So we're down here. Now, the, um, the data inside uh, local notices, which I'll show you in a minute, is, is generally key values attached to a geometry of some sort. So it could be a point, which was the two previous examples I gave you, or in the instance of a road, it could be a, a line. Uh, it could be a, um, a line string. So um, it could equally be the outline of a building if it was related to that. So I will add that in. We then have the concept of a start and an end date. So this is kind of broadly when might it have be, be of interest to people. So that would probably be between, well, yesterday actually, but we'll leave it for today. And tomorrow, and we've got the time zone right. And then we've published it. And then that information is, is then available as in various different formats. And you can kind of see the format there. So we've got We've got a location, which can be of various types. We've got a title, we've got um, a description, we've got these key values, and then we've got a start and end point. Everything, I think you can pretty much model everything like that. Um, I will come back to talk about that again in a moment. Um, I want to talk about one of the other features. So that's all very nice. How might you find out about that? There's also the, the, a very, very basic alerting service built in. So if you care about things where you live or where you work, um, it is possible to go and create, um, so say I care about things roughly in this area. I can then create an alert and then that will send me emails of anything, any um, 
new notices that intersect with that polygon there. Uh, and again, though, that information is also available as a, uh, in very, as via an API as in various feeds. So you can see uh, in here, hopefully, that returns some data. Um, doing for time, fine. So my hope is that, that the um, that most people won't use that user interface to actually get data into this. I'm kind of hoping they're more there for example, for, for an example, and. Um, for the purposes of kind of getting some seed data in there. Long term, I'm hoping that the main way that people will use this will be via an API. So um, I will use this as a bit of an opportunity to explain some of the data formats a bit more. So um, using this format here, so if we do, no, not that one, sorry. Okay, let's see if we can find the one that we just added a second ago. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the format again. So it's um, uh, every notice has a title, a description, a bunch of arbitrary tags, um, but everything has uh, the location, everything has a start and an end, end date, because uh, that then allows you to those act as indexes. So you can say, show me all the things that uh, I care about within this area or show me all things within this time frame. So everything has a kind of like a spatial and a temporal dimension to it. Um, and this is also the, also the, um, the format by which we re I'm hoping we get most of the data into this. So rather than people coming along and typing them in individually, um, we'll start getting people writing screen scrapers, taking data from their local, local government websites and importing it in, and potentially also local, local authorities, local government, publishing data directly into this platform and using it as a way of engaging with uh, local citizens. Just to show you briefly, uh, talk briefly about um, how it's made and what that looks like underneath. So it's a GeoDjango app um, using PostGIS. Um, this is the model for a notice. So again, you can kind of see everything's got a title and a description got a location, which can be various geometry types, a start and end date, and then a series of tags, which is stored as an HStore field in, in PostGIS. Um, say something a bit briefly about time zones as well. I have to store the time zone uh, alongside a date time field, because when you're thinking about the, the, the correct time zone is the, is the one which the person who posts the notice believes it to be. So if you happen to be in London, um, uh, you probably want that to be local GMT time, but you might not. Maybe it's a, a group of, um, uh, I don't know, like a group of American expats meeting up and they want to do it at a different time zone. Um, that's not the best example I have there, but it's, um, uh, I kind of came to the conclusion you have to stop a time zone along, alongside the dates. Uh, the stack other than that, it's mostly just a standard Django app. Um, the mapping is using OpenLayers 3, uh, and it uses the... Um, uh, geocoder that maps then provide. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. Bit of a roadmap. Um, hoping to launch uh, a kind of geofence version of this in a couple of places. So in South London, where I live, and in Berlin, where a friend of mine who's a user researcher lives. Um, so it would probably only be possible to post notices within those small areas to start with at least. And I want to try and get like really high resolution data for a couple of small areas rather than going broad. Um, second thing on the roadmap, um, this has intentionally been built as a, like very much as a kind of blank slate. It's kind of hopefully quite unopinionated in its functionality and design so far. That's intentional because I want to try and take it to people who work in local government, people who work in local newspapers, who run hyper-local um, uh, online groups and understand what they need and what the hooks will be for them to use it, uh, use a platform like this. Uh, I need to write some code libraries around the API um, to try and make it as easy as possible for people to write screen scrapers for their local authority. Um, I want to be able to do recurring notices. So most of the, the examples I show you, they're all kind of like one-offs in time. If you think about things that recur, so for example, um, tell you when to put your bin out, 
uh, if you have a rubbish collection where you live, um, or if there's something that happens on an annual basis. Um, you wouldn't want to go in and create one of those every single week or every single year. Um, I want to be able to have a type of notice which understands uh, periodicity. So you can say this happens every single month, every single week on a Tuesday, whatever. Um, and then finally, beginning to think a bit about provenance and the signing of notices. So this is intentionally uh, an open kind of wiki style um, product at the moment. But how do you know that a, uh, a particular notice is genuinely true? Well, one way would be if you could certify that it's come from a user that you trust. So maybe you would trust if it's come directly from a local authority, from local government, but not from a, an individual. Um, and this is quite an interesting problem, I think, for any kind of open, uh, uh, open kind of common style platform at the moment. Like as we become more reliant on things like OpenStreetMap, what, and we heard this in one of the previous talks, what happens when they break? If someone d deliberately sabotages um, a set of, a, a, a series of open data sets, and suddenly we can't get to, you know the, the population of a large city can't get to work on time. You know these things are becoming increasingly critical bits of infrastructure. So how we understand which how we assign uh, almost like a, a trust marker to individual bits of a data set, I think becomes increasingly important. So I'm trying to think about how we might do that. Um, and that's about it, really. I think there's, um, yeah, open for questions and then, yeah, that's it. I'm done, I think. Thank you. I'm particularly interested if anyone has any examples of like how it works for Valen. Yes. Yeah. Do you, in your user research, you're yeah. looking at people putting the data in. Are you also going to be looking at users um, who are going to be using getting that data? So, um, how how the, presumably a local authority would link on, onto a website or something or a, Yes, yeah, so it's definitely like a two-sided problem. Um, one of the, one of the, oh, okay, sorry, over the question. Um, so the question was, um, am I going to be thinking about consumers of data as well as people putting in stuff into the system? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of very acutely aware that for anything like this to work, it needs, you need to, you need both sides to work. Um, one thought I have so far is actually potentially setting up a couple of, like, consumer <laughs> websites almost just as, like, a test um, a test bed, or go and talk to a couple of um, hyperlocal websites. So there's a couple of newspapers where I live, which have got really small circulations. So like trying to understand what they need. Do they need something that automatically renders a PDF that they can put in their newspaper, for example? Um, uh, I mean, a bit of a, a bit of backstory to this. I about 10 years ago now, I built a website just for planning applications, just for the UK, and it relied purely on screen scrapers. Um, and people used it, it was fine, but it, it degraded over time because you had individual, like trying to maintain screen scrapers, it like just um, uh, it became too much hassle basically. Um, so I'm kind of like aware for this to work, it's going to need a, a really healthy uh, ecosystem on both sides of the both sides, yeah. Anyone else? Nope, good, thank you very much. Not, not oh, a question, but just a comment. In, in Flanders, there is really a, an obligation to. They have built systems to put notices for those kind of things. They have implemented the backend, but not yet the API. So it could maybe be a nice case. Ah, that's good to know. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Berlin. Sorry? You have a colleague from Berlin? Yes. Maybe knows uh, code for Berlin. That is, ah, uh, I didn't know that. Quite a because it's, uh, they have um, like a weekly meetup in the OK lab. And they have okay done, they, yeah, they've done something um, about um, building concessions. Yeah, just turn on the microphone. So oh, yeah.
like that yeah that's okay so I'm just going now mm -hmm. is there anything you should know yeah. you can check if the audio is working if the microphone is on you should hear it that's basically it and, uh, and if I don't and then the speaker normally the, the, if there's one button it says mute okay. probably that one is still on The camera is pointed now towards where he is standing. Mm -hmm. If he's moving a lot, you should zoom out a bit. And you okay. can zoom out by pressing B button. <coughs> and zoom in by that one. And I think Anna quit the camera a lot as well, so she can yeah. help you if you're really blocked. Okay. <laughs> but it should be right now. You get more money. Otherwise, I won't get much money. Should be okay. Yeah, it should be okay. Okay. The screen no. also seems to work. If if this room keeps for eight hours more, then maybe we can it. Yeah, yeah, I've already noticed that. Yeah. That's my idea. This one. That was my plan. Okay. So you know that you have 20 minutes of presentation? Okay. So I will show you the five minutes left and mm -hmm. the photo. And if you don't have it,